The author of this story is Pancham Prakash. It was about 12 o'clock that night, and the fierce icy wind outside was adding to the fizz. When I looked out of the window while making my peg, nothing was visible, even though there was light. That night I was quite sure that no one would pass by here today. So, I comfortably rested my back on the chair and then started listening to my favorite tune on the gramophone, kept on the table next to me. That's when someone knocked on the door. I thought in my mind that who can be in this strong storm so late at night? It seems to be my illusion that someone knocked. I have gone crazy living alone. I ignored the first knock on the door, thinking that. Only then, there was a second knock. Hearing that, I was shocked from inside. Who's at the door? But no one gave any answer to my question. After some time, I calmed down. That's why once again, there was a loud knocking, which forced me to pick up my gun and I took off my double-barreled gun, hanging on the wall, and loaded it and moved towards the door. With the help of the gun, I opened the latch of the door, after which the strong wind of the storm automatically pushed the door inside, but there was no one in front of me. My mind wandered, thinking that if there is no one outside, then who knocked on the door? Well, to see whether anyone is around or not, I started looking left and right just by pointing the gun. Then it seemed that someone ran backwards and I fired in a hurry. Firing made such a loud sound in that deafening silence that there was chaos among owls and bats. Here, I was about to fire again when a loud voice came from the darkness behind the house. Please don't shoot. We are just joking. After listening to his voice, I could understand that he is a living person. So I also said, yes, yes, but come in front of me. But I still didn't put the gun down. Only then a young boy came slowly from the darkness towards the light. And a girl was also hiding behind him in fear. I quickly lowered my gun and said, does anyone joke like this? What if the bullet had hit you? Sorry, I had forbidden him, but he did not agree. He said at the end, when we wish Christmas, you will be happy. When that girl talked about Christmas, I was a little taken aback. Christmas? Is it Christmas today? I don't know. I didn't come out for months. And look, when December came, I didn't even know. Well, you guys go inside. If you stay here, you will become frozen. He had brought a lot with him, as if he had prepared for the whole party. I also noticed their clothes, which they must have worn thinking of Christmas. After coming inside the house, I jokingly said to him, Looks like you have come prepared to take possession of my house. <laughs> yes, we will have our possession here for the night. By the way, do you live here alone? No, I live with my wife. She is resting in the upstairs room. Both of them decorated the entire hall. As soon as they saw it, they had come from Delhi for celebrating Christmas in the valley. They stopped seeing our house. Because of the strong storm, it was almost 12 o'clock, so I started going to my room. That's when they said, Where are you going? Will you not celebrate Christmas with us? No, I don't celebrate Christmas. You enjoy. Saying so much, I started entering my room upstairs. He had despair on his face due to my refusal. I was secretly watching from my room in the hall that he also became calm now and sat in the hall as if to celebrate now there is nothing left. That's why the girl said, Karthik, he will definitely not have anyone to celebrate with him. Why don't we call him and bring him? I was not liking this plan of his at all because only a few minutes were left for 12 o'clock and his coming here in my room could bring trouble. But how do I stop them as he was moving upstairs. My restlessness was also increasing. And then finally, the clock went to 12 and the bell started ringing and he shouted loudly, opening our door. Merry Christmas. 
Merry Christmas. But as soon as he saw the room inside the door, his senses <gasps> flew away. Because my room was not a normal room, but a freezer, where my wife's dead body was lying on the bed in the middle of a big block of ice. Seeing which, the girl screamed loudly and the cake fell from her hand and both of them ran towards the door, which was not opening at all. Then I started coming down the stairs with my slow steps. Now he was looking at me like, as if I am deaf for him. I didn't say anything to them. They were also standing in the corner, holding each other out of fear. I went straight to my bottle of rum and began to sing. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Christmas has come, now there will be a game of death. That's why Kardik moved forward quickly and picked up my gun and pointed it at me. He tried a thousand times, but did not press the trigger. And I started laughing out loud, seeing the dead body in my room. And then seeing me laughing like this, he lost his senses. He had a thousand questions in his mind. After all, what is happening here? And what was going to happen to them here? All their questions will end with that. Which started when the lights of the house went off, which used to come sometimes and sometimes go. Along with that, the inverted footprints and anklets were slowly moving towards them. That's why the girl, hiding behind Cardiff, suddenly fell on the ground, as if someone pulled her by the hair and slammed her there. Rhea, you're fine. Why am I not able to move from here? Who is doing this with us? Please leave us. Hey, why are you laughing sitting on the chair? At least say something. As soon as Cardiff said this, the light started fluctuating rapidly. Then when the light went off, he would see someone holding Rhea's throat. And then as soon as the light came on, she would disappear. And all she could see was Rhea screaming, holding her throat. Then his eyes went to the photo of me and my wife in the hall, and he shouted, She is your wife? Why is she killing my Rhea? What has she done? On hearing this, I threw my glass on the ground and shouted, So what harm did my wife do to anyone? With these words, I started telling him my story of two years ago. That time was also Christmas, when due to urgent work, I had to go to the city leaving my wife alone at home. But it was decided that I will come back as soon as the sun sets. She was waiting for me sitting at the door, preparing for Christmas. It was night from evening, but I did not come because I was stuck somewhere on the way due to landslide. On the other hand, there was a knock on the door of my house. My wife thought that it was me, but there was no one outside. Even after knocking, she thought that maybe I was joking. So she went out and started looking for me. But how would I meet? Because I was not there. So she went back to the house and was closing the door. That she saw something like a Santa at a short distance, which was now moving towards her. She stopped at the door and looked at him. When he was fully visible, it was revealed that he was not an ordinary Santa, but a dreaded Santa, holding a red bag on his back, then a big one in the other hand, the wrench. My wife Mark understood that there was some danger, so she started to close the door. But before she could close the door, Santa gave a strong kick <coughs> to the door, due to which Barka fell on the ground. Her head started spinning, and that beast who came in the form of Santa started looting my house. He looted all the money and ornaments kept in the house, and while going back, when Barka tried to stop him by holding his leg, he swung his pan and hit him on the head, and then his eyes went to the mangle citra around Barka's neck and the gold ring on her finger. What was it then? That beast pounced on her to snatch her mangle citra and finally snatched it from her neck. But even after continuous efforts, the ring was not coming out of the finger. And in the end, 
He turned out to be such a big monster that he picked up a knife from the table and cut off her finger for a ring and then hit her again with his wrench, leaving Bark in agony and fled. When I reached home, I found the door open, seeing which I realized that something was wrong. Then as soon as I went inside, I found my soulmate lying in blood. She died saying this in my arms that Ravish, I told you <laughs> not to leave me alone. And since then, I have not left my house and gone anywhere. Every time I sit here in this easy chair, I watch everyone die at the hands of Barca's soul. And my heart is very relieved because someone must have killed her like that. You are absolutely right. And if so, then tell your wife to take my life because I cannot see Rhea dying. His words hit me straight to the heart and I said, stop Barca. Her soul got angry when I stopped her because never before that night did I stop her. But before today, I have not seen anyone like Cardin who wants to sacrifice himself to save his love. I have always been observing that, seeing death, everyone thinks only about themselves, but not Kardec. He was thinking about Rhea. I had stopped my wife's soul, but what would happen next, I did not even know this time, because as soon as I stopped her, the whole house screamed with her anger. Lights turned on and off more quickly. The mirrors started breaking and the weather became even worse. Then her soul came right in front of my face and said, You could not take my revenge. And now I should not to kill him too. In the darkness of the night, all those who come suddenly will die. Like he killed me. And if you come in between, I will finish you too, and take you with me. Barka's words shook me from inside, and then I realized there is no meeting between human and dead soul, and they cannot belong to anyone. So I decided that, even though I have lost my love, but I will not let her love separate from Kardec's life. Barka's spirit had started torturing Rhea and Cardin. And I knew she would not stop. So I went straight to my room and handed over the Barca, which I had kept for two years, to the fire god. Then there was a loud scream from the hall and I reached there, where Barca's soul was dying slowly due to burning pain. What have you done, Ravish? You have destroyed your Barka. I should have done this long ago. Barka. But I promise, now my life will have only one aim. To finish that wrench killer who killed you. As soon as I said this, Barka's soul completely disappeared from there. And I started crying in the same pain. <laughs> then Kardec and Rhea came to me and started handling me. Next morning, I also left this house with both of them and went off in the car along with them. Then the news came on the radio. Another painful incident has come to the fore from the Himalayan valleys. According to the sources, on last Christmas night, the wrench killer, who came in the disguise of Santa, painfully killed a woman and robbed her house. <laughs>